beautiful and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where I am going to talk about my least favorite product from some of my favorite brands. I got to thinking about this a while ago when I, a while ago, about a week ago when I started seeing some sneak peeks of the new Natasha Nona Retro palette that I am actually wearing on my eyes today. The video about this one is already up. I will leave a link to that in the description box. And I started to compare it to like existing palettes in my collection. And I got to this palette, the Lila palette, and I was thinking in my head, it's crazy how it's so clear to me which of my Natasha Denona products are my least favorite one, even though this is my favorite brand. And then I like, popped the switch in my head. I was like, wow, I want to do a video all about this. So I'm going to be talking about 10 products here that are my least favorite products from my favorite brands. If you haven't been here before, hello, my name is Angie. I'm such a lover of beauty and makeup. Love everything beauty and makeup related. Love playing with color. Love playing with textures. I love experimenting with makeup. And if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe because I upload five videos a week. So let's just start with this one. This is the Natasha Denona Lila palette. I said, I think this is discontinued. I think this is discontinued. I don't think any of the other uh, products here are gonna be discontinued. Maybe you can still find this somewhere. I'm not 100% sure. But it was like, this was the thing that sparked this idea. I love Natasha Denona. Most of the things that I've tried from the brand has been so good. I enjoy them so, so much. And this one, it's just meh. And this was the first product I tried from the brand. And I tried this and I was like, well, it's nice. It's nice. It's nice. And had I not seen other people talking about this palette in the same regards, being like, it's nice, but it's not her best product, I probably never would have tried anything else from Natasha because I was not like... I was underwhelmed by the price tag and by the hype the brand had because Natasha Denona did come to Europe a bit later than, than it, um, it came to, to the US and I didn't buy anything until it came to Swedish Sephora so I just feel like this is not the Natasha Denona quality and this is also one of her older palettes so maybe it's not that surprising that this is not as good quality as the things she has now but it's always had the same price tag though so I don't know what that tells you, but that is definitely not my favorite palette uh, from them. And then we have this one. This is so easy. Let's get this out of the way. I love Melt. I love the owners. I love the concept of Melt. I love the way they're always playing with darker and more moody colors. I love that they're often tapping into color and often tapping into darker, deeper colors. And I thought that this was going to be it. I thought this was going to be my yellow, green, grunge, neutral palette, but I hated the quality of this one. It's so easy for me to say that this is my least favorite product from Melt. I do have a bullet lipstick from Melt as well that I don't really like either. I've had two and I think I've decluttered both of them or maybe I have one left. I'm not 100% sure. They do great colors, but the formula is not my favorite. And I would say that, that is probably the second one, but I think this was the biggest disappointment because with matte lipstick, it is like an ultra matte lipstick. I wasn't like that surprised when I realized that it wasn't my type of formula because with ultra matte lipsticks, it's like a 50-50 if I'm gonna like them or not. This one, I honestly thought I was gonna love it. I honestly thought that I was gonna love this one because normally I love the, the quality of melt, but this is not it. I don't think that this is the normal good melt quality. I don't like it. I'm gonna show you something. Actually, I have decluttered this, but it is still available on the site. It is no surprise that Odin's Eye is one of my favorite brands. I love Odin's Eye. I think they're amazing. They're a Swedish indie brand and they do all of their makeup based on Norse mythology. This is the Elva 2 highlighter palette. Elva 2. <laughs> I mean, these are a Swedish name, it is a Swedish brand. This is the number two palette. This one I like, but the number one, I didn't like at all. I didn't like it. I actually gave it to a friend. It is still available on the site. I will show you a picture. It's probably up here somewhere. And that one, I thought, I thought the kick up and the fallout and the glitteriness, it wasn't my favorite and I actually didn't like it at all. And that's why I was a little bit worried when I tried this one because I was like, ooh. I remember not liking the first one, but I do like the second one. I just didn't like the first one at all. And like I said, I decluttered it, gave it to a friend. This is just going to be a general thing. This is going to be a general thing. It's not going to be this one precisely because I haven't tried this one. But all of the eyeshadows that I have tried from Pixi have been not it. I think I've tried two or three different palettes 
but I don't think I've reviewed all of them on YouTube. This is the Pixi and Tina Young palette. This might be another formula, I don't know, but I've been so disappointed with the Pixi eyeshadow, so I'm not gonna be trying this one because there's such a big probability that I'm not gonna like it. I think the Pixi eyeshadows are very gently pigmented, I think they're very smooth and silky, but it also makes them very easy to blend, but it also makes them blend away a bit, and it makes them extremely hard to... It makes them extremely hard to build on. Like, it's really hard to get any kind of depth like this, and they also fade on me. And eyeshadows normally do not fade on me, but some ingredients in this, I don't know which one, and I honestly am not good with ingredients, but I feel like an ingredient, it feels a little bit like butter. I know when you hate saying that, but all, it feels a little bit like a cream to powder almost. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna feel like that, but it almost sinks into the skin. Like you apply a moisturizer with shimmer in it. I don't know if this makes sense. I just haven't been impressed with their eyeshadows and that's why I'm not gonna break into this palette. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the color scheme. It's just not my preferred eyeshadow formula. I think Pixi does a lot of things really good. Some of my holy grail uh, skincare is from Pixi. I think Pixi makes uh, like highlighter and blush products amazing eyeshadows I'm not convinced I'm not convinced Colourpop is one of my favorite brands and initially I thought these the color sticks these are the Powerpuff uh, collection color sticks but then I realized that I've only tried these three color sticks I haven't tried any other ones I didn't like these I think they went on patchy it was really hard to like uh, it was really hard to get an even surface if you wanted to use them as eyeshadow and when you started blending on them I didn't think that they looked smooth so I feel like this one is like more like a primer but then it's like why why just don't release on the primer in a stick but I will be honest there is I don't like these I don't like the formula of these at all I think this is the least my least favorite product from that collection and it doesn't really want make me want to try more in that formula but I have to be honest the least favorite product from Colourpop, and this is something that I've tried over, like this has been around in their collection for years, and I've tried the old one, and I've also tried the one that they say are reformulated, and it's the cream gel liner in pots, and uh, uh, maybe they reformulated, but they sure as hell didn't make them better. These are, I, uh, these are so bad. They are so stiff and so tuggy. You have to like dig. Uh, all the ones that I've tried, I've tried maybe five or so. Some I've gotten in PR, some I bought myself. I don't think that they are really perfecting this formula. Maybe I've just been unlucky and got all bad colors, but let's be honest, if I tried four or five random ones and all of them have been bad, maybe it is a bad product then. If some of them are good, it has, it's not supposed to be like Russian roulette, like did you pick a good color or a bad? That is a product that I will never buy and try again unless they, they clearly, I clearly see a review from someone I trust saying that they are better now because I don't think that this formula is good. And I decluttered all the ones I had. I tried to look for them, but I've decluttered them and I'm not surprised because they, mm, they weren't it. I really like Fenty and I've been trying a lot of Fenty products lately, but the one thing that I've tried that I was actually like disappointed in is this brow uh, MVP. And I think, this is just me, this has a little comb that you like comb your brows and it has like a wax stick here. The thing with this one though, uh, I bought this other recommendation from a friend and she loves it and for me this is the worst product, the least favorite product from uh, Fenty because it didn't work for me. But obviously it works for her because she recommended it to me as one of her favorite products. I will say if you have uh, longer hairs that you want to... This isn't like set down. This isn't. Uh, this is more of a flexible hold. It makes them not fly in the wind. It sets them down a little bit. Put some wax in them. But I need something that that makes my hair a bit not crusty, but you know, it sets down. It makes me be able to bend the hairs in the way that I want them to be, and then they set in that direction. This doesn't do that. This is a little bit flexible, and it just my hairs go down over the day. I don't think that this is like a bad product. It just doesn't do what I want it to do. So for me, this is my least favorite product that I have tried um, from Fenty. NYX is one of my favorite brands. You know that some of my Holy Grail, a lot of my Holy Grail products are from NYX, but there were two products that I initially thought of when I was like least favorite product. One of them is the brow pomade. I have described this as like 
colored snot. It's like so slimy and so smeary and it is intensely pigmented and it's just too, it's like, it's like asking for Sharpie brows. I think this is a really hard to work with product and I also got to think about the Can't Stop Won't Stop Matte Foundation that I honestly think looked absolutely atrocious on me. I hated this foundation with a burning passion. It looked like cement. I look like I look, I literally traveled forward in time. Like all of a sudden I was eight years old and it just, mm, that's not the look I was going for. But when I think about like, what is my least favorite product? It has to be that bro pomade because I don't understand who would like that. I'm la I guess it's so hard to work with. There are so many better brow pomades on the market. It's just one of the worst products I've ever tried because it is just so smeary and slimy and pigmented and it's just I did not like that one at all and I'm surprised <laughs> surprised that that is not one of the products that's been discontinued they can't stop won't stop uh, I'm sure that there are people out there that love that foundation I've heard of people loving that foundation I mean if you have a different skin type than me I do have normal skin but I I mean I'm 37 I mean I do have fine lines and a bit more textured skin and blah blah blah, you know, all that things that the yummy things that come with time. So that foundation is not for me. Maybe when I was 17, not 20 years later. It wasn't for me. But that brow pomade, ooh, that's not for me. That ew, I don't even know if it's for anyone. Juvia's Place is one of my favorite brands, and most of the things that I've tried from Juvia's Place I've really liked. This concealer isn't my favorite because this concealer is too creamy for me. It's how do you say too creamy? But like this one, if I don't set this with quite a lot of powder, it is going to crease on me. And if I use too much powder, it's looking really heavy under my eyes. So I feel like this concealer is perfect if you do not have, because I have very textured under eyes, like it is, it, it's a mess under here. So for me, this is a no-go because I need too much powder to set this and it looks too heavy under my eyes. And if I don't use enough powder, it's going to crease too fast. But I've heard other people really love it because it is like creamy and because they feel like it's more hydrating under your eyes. But for me, it's just too creamy and too heavy for my crinkly under eyes because I just need too much powder but this isn't for me but I've heard other people like me but this is my least favorite product I also do not use the full coverage foundation as foundation I use it as spot concealer it is my absolute favorite spot concealer it's the best and probably most affordable spot concealer you'll ever try such a good one do I only have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. okay I only have two products left from two different brands. Well, I'm gonna be honest. I thought about ABH. I really love ABH. I think ABH does really good products. I haven't tried everything that they offer, but have tried quite a few things. And I didn't really like any of these. This is the Brow Freeze, which I honestly feel the same way as I feel with this one. I don't feel like this is a freeze. I feel like this doesn't keep my brows up all day. I feel like it it falls with time. If I use enough for it to actually stay up all day, there is a risk of it being like, you can see it in my brows, like it looks a bit goopy. And this is the Iced Out Highlighter. This one came in the same packaging and this beautiful like embossing that reminded people of that Amrisi highlight that everyone like. I don't have that one, so I can't compare, but I'm gonna be honest, this is a pretty mediocre formula. Like, it is, it's pretty dry and it's not that impressive. I just, I don't, hmm. something about this looks crusty on my cheeks and that's why I feel like this one, I still feel like this fills a purpose and I hear, hear a lot of people really liking this. This one, I just think that they, this is like, I don't know, it's like highway robbery because they're literally charging pretty, a pretty penny for a highlighter when you can go to NYX or to Juvia's Place or to Pixie or to any anyone to be honest and buy a highlighter for less money that is better quality than this and you get more than one shade to choose from so I honestly like if you're just gonna release one highlighter if you're just gonna release one shade for a special collection that better be real damn good quality 
And that's not what this is. This one is going to be from BH Cosmetics. I have mostly tried eyeshadow palettes from BH Cosmetics. I've not tried that many other things. I've been so in love with their eyeshadow palette formula. I really hope that they will start expanding to other things as well. Because the more I think of it, the more I realize that they release eyeshadow palettes and face palettes. And then sometimes they do some other products within like influencer collabs. I'm just... I'm a little bit surprised that we're not seeing full ranges of other things. But I started thinking like, what is actually my least favorite palette from BH Cosmetics? And the more that I've tried, I did a ranking with BH Cosmetics and they've come out with newly formulated versions of the, um, the travel palettes. And that video should already be live where I am like talking about the travel palettes from BH Cosmetics. They've reformulated some of them, even though they said they didn't. They did, if you want to see see all about that, go check that video out on my channel, it's already live. But the more that I think of it, my least favorite palette has to be one of the Birthstone palettes because every one of those has a press glitter. And I don't think that I said that this was my least favorite one the last time I talked about it, but the more I've tried them, the more I've swatched them, the more I compare them, this is my least favorite right now. Birthstone palette and I think it's maybe surprising because it is the blue one But there is a very easy there are two reasons two reasons one of them is that for this to be a blue palette for me I need a darker blue matte These two they don't even that well go together because this is like a reddish brown and this is like a cool tone tone I can see beyond that, but I'm sad that there's only one blue matte had this one had this one been a dark blue matte we would have sing, been singing a different tune because I think that I would have been able to see past the, the second reason why this is in the bottom and that is that this is not that excellent BH Cosmetics quality. The more I try it, the more I realize this is a little bit lacking. The mattes don't build as good, like this doesn't build as good as mattes from BH Cosmetics normally does and I'm like, it's nice, but this is my least favorite one. And I also feel like this is the least cohesive one because it's like I don't really feel like these shades go together and I wouldn't pull out this palette to complement another palette. The way that I would, for example, pull out both the pearl and the diamond one because sometimes I do want a smaller neutral palette like that to travel with or to use together with another palette. So this one doesn't fill a purpose in my collection and once I have reviewed all of these birthstone palettes after the end of the year, I don't see this one staying that much further in my collection. And that was it. Those were my 10 least favorite products from 10 of my most favorite brands. Let me know what you think about this. There are some brands that are like my favorite brands that I honestly don't have. I don't have a product that I've tried from them that I dislike or there are recently discovered brands that I'm falling in love with that I haven't tried enough from so that I can justify talking about one of them as my least favorite product. These are brands that I've at least tried quite a lot of, um, of the products that they are offering. Let me know. Let me know, is there a favorite brand that you have that has a product that you're like, no, this is not up to par. This is definitely not the reason why you are one of my favorite brands. I would love to hear about it. I hope you're having an amazing day. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and I will see you again soon for a new video. Bye.